can you think of a time when you were really, really impressed with a teacher or an instructor you had? And I'm wondering also, were you a student or were you observing a class? So think of a time that you were really, really impressed with how that person was teaching. And then I want to find out how many of you were students at that time? OK. So pretty, pretty big majority. Uh, how many of you were actually just observing the class? Great. Great. So not that many. So um, I want to find out from you guys, what do you think briefly are some of the differences? Why do you think observations are important? Especially as you take on maybe an existing role of you know, teaching or teaching assistant or uh, maybe a new role. So why do you think <coughs> observations are important? Yes. OK. Sure. So um, I don't know if everyone heard. It's one way to learn from others. You learn vicariously the people who have been there before and who are there right now. OK. So you learn vicariously. Instead of starting from scratch or something. Not having to reinvent the wheel. Great. Sure. Um, that way you can like, the more observations you do, you can like, you know, see what's going to work for you and what's not going to work. Great. So trial and error, but by observing others, not necessarily trial and error through. To yes. learn new techniques or presenting information. More techniques, so more ways of doing that. Great. So that that's actually pretty much. Um, what we're here to talk about today is pretty much um, the fact that observations are in themselves a process of continuing the learning, continuing to, um, to get information from others, to integrate perspectives, not reinventing the wheels, enriching your portfolio or your, your skills and your toolbox as a teacher, right? So, oops. Learning is a li lifelong process, right? I mean, how many of you, if you've had an opportunity to teach, how many of you have found that the more classes you've had an opportunity to teach or co-teach or be part of, the more you actually have grown, the more techniques you've added to your toolbox, um, the more confident you are? How many have, have noticed that? OK, so that's, that's that's pretty much what observations are all about, to continue growing. And this is, one of this, this is one of the quotes that we really like. The quality of the teaching has become a crucial concern at colleges and universities today. And have, how many of you have noticed sometimes that teachers maybe put more accent sometimes you know, more, more focus on research or other activities and maybe not on, as much on teaching. Where we're trying to move away and the purpose is to move away from just other concerns and f other focuses and try to focus on, on teaching and go back to teaching and why we are in this profession, right? And as you all mentioned, um, the observations have two roles, to learn, but also to give feedback to others. So if you are conducting observations with one of your um, TA fellows, with um, one of your perhaps graduate um, classmates, maybe they're teaching the class as well, you have the opportunity to also provide feedback. So not only that you are leaving with um, you know, a better toolbox, more enriched background as far as teaching skills, but you have an opportunity to add something to their um, teaching. So, and we'll tell you in a second pretty much the steps for doing that. And you all have already identified this, that if, you know, you identify alternate ways of, talk, of talking about approaches, and creative um, ways of teaching. So we've already covered that. And these, th this is also one of the things that we highly believe in, that this is one of the foundational steps 
for teaching. It's not just one of those um, things that we require you to do, it's one of the things that actually adds to your, to your experience and it, it actually um, helps you grow. So we'll, we'll talk about the steps involved in the process and they're pretty much simple as one, two, three. I mean, pretty much what the steps that you'll, you'll be involved in is to meet with your instructor or with a faculty member or with a TA, um, with a TA fellow and discuss, we'll, we'll talk briefly about each step, but pretty much discuss prior to the class meeting kind of the objectives involved, what kind of things um, are, you know, are they using for the class as far as syllabus, other materials, other documents. The second step is the observation itself. So the time that you spent going to the classroom, sitting in there, taking notes perhaps, um, perhaps interacting with students, whatever you choose um, to enhance your learning experience. And then the third step is the post visit. And the post visit also has a couple of components and um, we'll go over them in a sense of what, what's helpful and what's the purpose of it. You can read the slide. One of the things that we find very important is that classroom observations are conducted in a positive environment. Why do you guys think that's important? Kind of setting a positive tone, positive attitude. People don't get defensive. Atmosphere conducive for learning. Atmosphere conducive for learning. You don't want to stress out the one you observe. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So you don't want to get them defensive. You don't want them to get stressed out. Um, you want it to be a condu conducive to learning, both on your part, but also their part, right? And ultimately to the students, right? Because you're observing a class, so you want to make sure that the class still um, meets its purpose. Yeah, those are, those are the reasons. Um, so again, to remember that observations are pretty much part of a consultation process. They're not necessarily just done as, you know, as just one of the things to check off your list. It's part of a process, a process in which you learn and the other person has an opportunity to learn as well. So it's kind of a two-way street. Remember that and, you know, it's, it's a facilitation process. It's um, both parties have something to gain. And as I mentioned before, you have a pre-conference visit. So the pre-conference visit has um, a pretty, pretty well-defined purpose. It's, it's a first opportunity for you to kind of check in with the professor or with a TA fellow. It's kind of your opportunity to also discuss with them what are the goals of the class. Let's say, um, let's say you are a psychology major and you decide to kind of go across disciplines and maybe go to a social work class or perhaps a humanities class. You're trying to just kind of broaden your horizons as far as teaching skills. So um, in, in this regard, it's very important for you to kind of find out what's the purpose of the class, what are the, the objectives, what are some of the things that are on the syllabus, what type of book do they use? Um, what's kind of the teaching philosophy of that instructor? And what's the teaching philosophy perhaps of the discipline? Dif different disciplines have different approaches. So that would be an important thing to kind of find out before you actually go to class. The other thing that it's important to find out is also, um, it's important to share with them um, the, the type of instrument that you'll be using to um, assess them and we'll talk a little bit in just a little bit about the forms where you'll actually um, do some of, some of the reflection of the, the observations and you'll have um, kind of a guided list of questions and um, 
you may want to share with them the procedures, you know, where you're going to sit. You might want to find out if they're comfortable with you um, talking to their students. You might want to discuss um, how, how long you'll be there for. You might want to discuss that you'd like to spend a few minutes after the session. So all of the things that, you know, otherwise might take them by surprise. Do you want to clear those up front? I think I've covered those. <laughs> Got a little bit ahead of myself. And the, the overall objectives of the course, again, based on the syllabus, based on the books, based on the, uh, the philosophy of that discipline and of the course and of the instructor. And then the immediate objectives for the class to be visited. You may find that um, if you visit a class, maybe during that class they have a big project going on. Maybe they're going to be doing a lot of group work and you might want to get some background on what that project or group has been working on. So you're not in the middle of something. Um, and I think somebody mentioned yesterday they, that um, they observed the class and they were doing a, a group project and uh, the department chair mentioned, you know, well, we'll come back when you actually teach. Well, group work is part of the teaching. So you may want to just get that background and that's all helpful to be able to frame your observation. And the instrument that um, we'll be talking about is um, in one of the, it's actually in your binder, and I'll let Margaret talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so Ioana was going over uh, a few things that you need to do in your pre-visit uh, conference when you talk to either the professor or the other TA who you're observing. Um, in my own observations, what I've done beforehand is I've kind of emailed the professor or the TA and I've introduced myself, you know, said where I'm from, my department, um, and told them, you know, what I'm interested in doing. So definitely you need to, you know, take care of that. Don't just kind of just burst in on someone. Um, and before you even make that decision, you know, um, make sure you think about who you are considering uh, going to visit, which class you're going to visit. Um, and don't just stick to your own uh, discipline. You definitely explore, um, expand your horizons, um, because you may hear things about other professors who um, may be excellent um, teachers. And so you can definitely um, steal those ideas. So definitely look, to, um, look at that information before you go. So some of the things that um, I ask for before I actually go um, to visit, to observe, is the instrument. And we have several examples in um, this particular section in your notebooks of uh, various rubrics, uh, kind of criteria that you're supposed to be looking at. And that's definitely a good idea to share that with um, the professor, the TA uh, of the class that you are going to observe. So let them know, you know, ahead of time, this is what I'm going to be looking at, this is how I'm going to be um, kind of assessing what's going on, and kind of ask them, you know, is there anything in particular that uh, you would like us to focus on, that you would like uh, me to address uh, when I'm doing the observation. So definitely pass that information along. Um, also important are the teaching components. And by teaching components, we are referring to, for example, the syllabus of the course. Ask for the syllabus if they don't mind passing that along to you. If there are any handouts that they were they're going to be using that day, that's also going to be important, some kind of PowerPoint. Any of those things that they're going to be using that particular day that you're going to visit, all of that information is going to be really helpful to you. Also important are any um, readings. Uh, for example, I went to, um, I've, I've observed a professor in my own department, and uh, he was reading The Fairy Queen. I, I don't know if any of you, I hope some of you know what that, that is. But anyway, uh, I hadn't read it since my undergrad uh, years, so I wanted to refresh myself. I briefly looked at it, and I made sure that, you know, at least I was somewhat, you know, I obviously didn't have enough time to thoroughly go over it as the students in that class would. However, I was a little familiar with what uh, they were going to talk about that day. So it's really going to be helpful to you to, to look at it. And obviously we understand that some of those books, some of those things you may not have access to, but, you know, get as much info as you possibly can. Perhaps the, the professor has an extra um, copy of the book or the text, whatever they're using. So you can do that as well. And also, very important, is the role that you will play 
um, during that class time. Go over uh, whether or not you know the students are going to acknowledge you. Uh, either way, it's definitely recommended that you are introduced to the class by the professor, by the TA. So you know if they're not comfortable with it, okay, you know it's okay. Don't don't worry about it. But um, definitely, you know, uh, it's recommended that way. You know, you're kind of just not sitting in the corner and they're wondering who is this person. Um, so definitely talk that over with the professor, um, with the TA that you are observing, and let them know uh, if that's okay. And then also you want to know, am I going to be uh, an active participant? Meaning if they do some kind of group work, if they do some kind of activity, um, or should you be involved in it as well? Or are you strictly going to be kind of in the in the back of the classroom, in the, in the front, simply writing down your notes, your observations. So establish that from the beginning uh, and make sure that that's addressed. That way you know. Um, some things also to consider in terms of your role um, is also, and this is mentioned on a previous slide, is also you want to address with that professor, that other TA, have, has, have the students been made aware of your presence? Have they been made aware that you're going to be a visitor in the class? And if so, then are you going to be a participant in the group? How is that going to be a factor in the way that the discussion proceeds, in the way the group work proceeds? Um, I feel terrible. I had somebody observe one of my courses, and we didn't address that beforehand. So she was kind of on the periphery, you know, observing. But then she had to ask me, you know, well, what is my role here? So if you address these kinds of things beforehand, you kind of avoid that awkward moment where you have to kind of stop class if you are being the TA at that moment and then address that or you avoid the professor having to do that by getting that information out of the way. Um, one of the things that we encourage here is to get to know the people that are here with you. Get to know the other TAs who are going through this process so that you can then send them a nice little email and say, hey, can I come observe your class? Can I be, you know, can we observe you and we can go over all these things. We kind of know what to expect of each other. When you get into your Blackboard sessions, you can start asking each other. And always remember that the UT fellows, you know, all of us that are here, you can always approach us and say, you know, I'm having trouble finding somebody. I'm having trouble finding somebody to observe. Can you recommend or can you help me find somebody? And don't wait till the last minute to do these kinds of things. That's the worst position that you can be in, so we can't stress that enough. Um, also. What is the degree to which student input is encouraged? You want to kind of discuss that beforehand. Is this kind of a lecture focused uh, um, class that you're visiting or is it going to be more of a group discussion? So what is, what is that contact going to be so that you have that information ahead of time? And also, what are the procedures for sharing feedback? Do you want to email this person and kind of touch base afterwards? Do you want to have a discussion afterwards? Like what, what, is, what are you most comfortable with? What is this person most comfortable with? And again, these are things that are for not only TAs that you're observing, but professors you're observing. So you should not feel shy about asking any people to have these observations because it is a tool for both of you to kind of gain knowledge from each other, have that kind of discussion, that exchange of information. I just want to add one more thing. Um, also, when you're asking uh, professors or TAs, don't be afraid to, to ask most professors. I don't think I have, I haven't encountered anyone, I don't know if any of the UTS have encountered any professor who's actually told us no, that we couldn't observe. I don't know if any of you guys in the back have. But most of us have been met, you know, openly. And uh, so, you know, don't be afraid of that. Approach whoever you would like to, whoever you're interested in. And, and don't be afraid that they're going to kind of reject you or something. Because they want feedback. The professors definitely want feedback. TAs, I'm sure you guys want feedback. So um, don't be afraid of, of that. I think that's important. And one other thing that we'd like to encourage is also be really intentional when you choose the, the TAs or the faculty members you want to observe. Don't, don't make it just like, oh, you know, I know this person and they're my friend and they're going to be okay with that. Just try to branch out, try to, you know, have, you know, be intentional about it because you'll be surprised. Sometimes when we reach out and we just figure out another discipline, you know, might be useful and you take a professor or somebody who has a lot of experience in the field, you'll be surprised how much you learn and how valuable that can be. It can really, really switch your perspective on teaching. It can really, really add something very valuable. So that, that's one of the things that you know, we noticed in the previous um, semesters that sometimes you know, if you leave it for the very end, then you'll pick 
somebody for the convenience of the session or, or the class, the time and stuff like that versus picking them because you've heard they're an, an outstanding professor or a great TA and you really have something to learn from. So that's something, again, you know, if you plan it ahead of time, you have the opportunity to observe something that would be very valuable. We've covered this part. Um, and it's, again, capturing holistically what's going on in the class is very important. Kind of like they've mentioned, where, where you sit, kind of observing what happens. And it's very important if you look at the reflection, there will be some guiding questions on there. And you'll be asked specifically, you know, what did you observe in the class? What methods were there used? Was there something that surprised you? Are, what are the strengths? What are the, some of the limitations? So it, it, if it encourages you to look more holistically, not just at what it's taught and perhaps how it's taught, but perhaps also how students are responding to it, whether they're attentive, how they're sitting. All these things are valuable things that you can draw from, but also valuable things to give feedback to the, to the instructor about because they may or may not be aware about it. You know, they may not be aware that their last row of students may be, you know, more on Facebook than anything else. So, and um, you, depending on what you agree on with, agree, agree on with the professor or the, the TA you're observing, you may be providing with a narrative, but more, most often it's kind of like just a one-on-one -on -one talk right after the observation ends in terms of what was useful, how you perceive things, and again, don't forget to um, keep that positive tone, the positive attitude that's all about learning. And um, don't forget, that's another thing that we, we try to stress, don't forget to fill out the reflections right afterwards. When all of the information is fresh on your mind, it's gonna come real, real easy to write it down rather than waiting a couple of weeks. You may not remember all of the details. And the observation, something that Margaret and I were talking about is actually try to remember as excited as you are and as enthusiastic you might be about you know, this outstanding faculty you're observing, try to remain objective too. Try to focus on their teaching method and what works effectively. So the objectivity comes in handy both for the observation but also for the learning process. And when you when you write up your report or you know, even observations for yourself, um, make sure that you keep them accurate, honest, focused, concrete, um, positively phrased, and again, action-oriented. And what all these things mean is that if you, if you focus on the facts, for example, um, rather than, you know, perhaps just mentioning students were um, sitting in mostly in the front of the classroom or mostly in the back of the classroom rather than saying, you know, most students didn't um, quite focus or weren't as interested in the, in the lecture. You know, just being factual, they were sitting mostly in the back of the classroom because there are some of the interpretations that we may make that may not be as accurate as some of the factual information. Um, if you stay focused on the methods, stay focused on what was, you know, interesting, helpful, what you've learned from, um, you're most likely to stay on track. Uh, on track. And positively um, phrased, you know, especially when you give feedback, that's, that's a very important component. You know, you, you mentioned defensiveness. So that, that's one of the things that we have to keep in mind, you know, walking in somebody else's shoes at that time and, you know, remembering perhaps what it's like to receive, you know, not so positive feedback. And um, you guys will have an opportunity to practice a little bit of that in the micro teaching sessions by giving each other feedback, finding ways to phrase things in a way that it's both helpful, reflects the information accurately, but not getting the person def defensive or, you know, hurt in the process. So again, the, the observations are meant to be a learning process, but they're also meant to be a source of um, 
information both for you and the person you're giving feedback to and perhaps a source of motivation you know perhaps you'll you know leave very enthusiastically um, you know thinking of ways that you can incorporate the things you've learned perhaps it's a source of motivation for the person you've you've observed in the sense of um, ways you've described or something that you've given them feedback on that could really, really help them conduct their class, uh, class time more effectively. And overall, I mean, observations and what you guys do out there, you know, throughout these assignments, it's really meant to kind of reinforce positive things, help you learn, you know, more things that would be helpful and um, may actually produce some changes in terms of how you teach classes, but how somebody else teaches classes. So again, it's a two-way street. If you look at it that way, it tends to, tends to help. And we'd like to spend a few minutes, um, if you guys have any questions about observations or conducting classroom observations or about the um, report, reflections afterwards, we'd like to open it up for a few minutes. Yes. If you don't have the module for the TLC, or is that, how is that going to be set up? It, if I remember from previous semesters, and you, know, you, you may help me if I'm wrong, it will be set up once you complete the micro-teaching sessions and you're assigned to a, a teaching fellow, okay. you will have the section created. So once you log into Blackboard, you'll actually be able to see your teaching certificate um, course. It's kind of like a course setup. And you'll have the individual assignments. Dr. Millis? Uh, one thing I think you'll find helpful is in your uh, notebook and your binder, there are uh, lots of samples, lots of examples that other TAs can show Yes. That'll be very useful uh, to show you, you know, what, what we're looking for in the observation. Mm -hmm. Yes. They, they show you, I mean, and, and you're right, thank you for that, that they show you pretty much I mean, the type of wording, what kind of things are helpful, how much to write. I mean, it, it's a really, really, they're really good guides in terms of what we're expecting. And you'll see the individual assignments. You'll be able to click in Blackboard on the course and then on individual assignments and submit them as you go along. I wanted to add very quickly as well. Um, uh, obviously, it seems implied, but some of you may not think it's implied. But um, be sure you take extensive notes, too, um, whether you are recording or not. If you are recording and you've okayed that with the professor beforehand, obviously, um, you know, make sure you go home and you write extensive notes. If not, if you are actually recording notes while in the class, you know, make sure they're extensive notes. And I know uh, when I did my observations for one professor, I ended up having maybe seven or eight pages of notes just for one 50-minute class. So, you know, take note of everything, as Ioana was saying, every little detail, you know, where the students are, how they're reacting, if they're reacting, the way they're sitting. All of those things are very important. They may not seem important at the time, but just write everything down. And it may also be helpful to actually have the um, tool in front of you um, meaning the reflection sheet that you're going to fill out. Kind of have that in front of you so you're kind of looking back and forth like, okay, what questions am I eventually going to have to address using my notes? Because I know when I actually wrote everything up last, uh, after the observations, I had to go back and look at my notes and some of the stuff that, you know, I wasn't too fuzzy, I was a little fuzzy on. So make sure that you're kind of looking back and forth to that so you don't forget some things. Any other questions? Do you find that it's kind of like beneficial if you pick maybe a department that parallels with something that you're doing in the research or a course that you're te taking as opposed to finding a specific TA or professor that you, um, you know, you know, might teach the course level or whatnot? Right. Uh, the question was uh, whether or not it's more beneficial to choose someone perhaps from your department, someone who has the same re research interests as yourself, or to perhaps branch outside of your discipline. Um, I'm gonna say it, it's gonna depend on you and I think both have its advantages uh, because I know you can uh, look at the TLC website and you can uh, see various professors from all disciplines who have received awards, um, you know, distinguished teacher. And it's up, you know, 
it's beneficial to you to take a look at their teaching styles because you may be an English person, but you go to see a, you know, a chemistry class or something, but you may really like the, their style, the methods they use, perhaps even the rubrics or you know, something that they're using in that classroom may be very helpful to you. On the other hand, um, it is very beneficial as well to be in a class that you are quite familiar with. For instance, if I'm in, you know, I'm an English person, if I sit in the middle of, you know, a psychology classroom or something, I'm not going to completely understand what's going on. So don't pick something, you know, ridiculously off base that you're going to be struggling trying to figure out the content. That's what I would say. Um, I don't know if anyone else. But another thing to consider is that you can do more than one observation, especially when, if you're looking to do the certi certification with distinction. So you can view more than one faculty member. So if you're looking for somebody who maybe is known for their different um, pedagogical skills and you know, skills in front of the classroom, but it may not be in your discipline or even close to your discipline, you can go and observe that person and then you know, stick to somebody maybe closer to home so that you get some of that you know, input as well. And the same with TAs. So you can observe, you know, two professors and one TA or two TAs and one professor. So definitely, you know, make sure you're looking through that information to see what you can do to get a certification with distinction because that just broadens, you know, those experiences that you're, you're sharing with uh, other individuals and, and the engagement that you have with those people to get more um, of a basis for when you're in your classroom and what you'd like to do. Are there any other questions? Yes. For the forms, the forms are going to be when you're loaded into your Blackboard courses after we go through the micro-teaching, everything, everything you will possibly need, want, anything will be on Blackboard. So you'll download the forms on Blackboard, you can take them with you to your observations, but then you will actually fill them out and submit them via Blackboard as well. So, yes, you can scan them, mm, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can take them just to have that tool in front of you, but then you want to submit them electronically. Everything is going to be done electronically with us on Blackboard. If you have problems or questions, you can always consult whoever your mentor TA happens to be. It's all, it's so easy. You should get right on it, <laughs> like, like next week. Are there any other questions? Okay, great, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.